Perfect. All right, hello everybody. It's Dr. Natalie Horwein here at the Mommy Meet and Greet, and we've got pelvic floor specialist, Doctor of Physical Therapy, Charla here, right? Yes. Yes, and so pelvic floor specialists, like everybody has different ideas of what it is, how can you get access to one, and what's beautiful, as we were talking before camera here, is that you have the opportunity to be able to actually reach more of the population because of the fact that you're in a private practice. Right? And so, how do most people find you to begin with? Like, why would a person come to a pelvic floor specialist? Okay, great. You know, there's so many symptoms that are really have become culturally normal for us in America that we haven't realized are completely treatable. So, a lot of the people that reach out to me are saying, hey, is it normal for me to pee when I laugh or cough or I can't jump on the trampoline with my kids? Um, or without having a feeling of pressure or some sort of incontinence and it's totally treatable it's become very common but common isn't the same as normal and so all of those things are totally treatable both in kids in teenage bowel and bladder functions and all through the lifespan really yeah well and the big thing is because we see a lot of, like even in chiropractic like we have a lot of people it's not like they're coming in for you know because they're urinating you know on themselves I do see kids for bedwetting and stuff but um, they usually are thinking that they have to go like a surgical route, right? And so you can be, we can be, but you can be that in between of like, okay, let's go a less invasive route before we start cutting into things, adding things, lifting things. So let's start talking about that of what you're able to do. So whenever people start to see what they think is a common or normal aging thing, that's another thing I'm sure you probably get. Especially like women where they're like, if they can't, if they cough, they might urinate or if they sneeze or heaven forbid they jump on a trampoline um, or laugh too hard, right? Exactly. They're afraid of leaking and that's like leaky bladder syndrome is a big thing. So with that being said, what what is your approach? Let's talk about that. Like say someone does end up finding you and then like what's the approach of where you go from there? Yes, you know, it's really patient dependent. Um, yeah. Every patient's different. So I do a lot of questions. I ask a lot of questions and I do a lot of listening. Um, I'm really of the opinion that if we listen well, the body's gonna tell us a mm. lot of information. Yeah. And so if we're good listeners to the body, then oftentimes it may be that we don't need those drugs or that surgery. Sometimes they are necessary and helpful, but actually the evidence shows that even if that's the case, fixing the underlying problem um, is so much more supportive whether you have to have drugs or surgery or not. Right. And conservative management is really the first line of defense in, in the research, and that's what a lot of the community is discovering that that's accurate. Oh, I love it. Yes. And so what can you say like for people that are like, but you know, my insurance, I've got to go to my medical doctor first and get a referral. So how can they get to you? Like, can they get to you? That's the other thing too, because a lot of people might think that they can't. So how can they, how can they get to you directly without having to see another doctor that they may, may not already be seeing, you know what I mean? Just to try to have access to you. Exactly. You know, I'm just really grateful that in the state of Arkansas, I have direct access because I have a doctor of physical therapy, my license, right. and I have direct access. So people can reach me um, either on Instagram, Dr. Charla Cox DPT, um, or reaching out to you guys, through me through you guys. Um, the, the great thing about what I do in private practice is that I'm just cash-based, yeah. and so I don't have to jump through any of the insurance mm. hoops, which is a relief for a lot of patients, actually. Um, a lot of insurances, a lot of private payer insurances still require you to meet your deductible. So there's still a huge bill, even if you wanted to file insurance, it's still a huge bill. And so I love being able to actually do either a virtual or an in-home visit where I can come to the client. Wow. And they don't have to gather up all the kids or get childcare or go somewhere into the clinic. They don't have to have a physician referral and they don't have to file insurance. And so everybody wins. Yes. And they can get access, get the knowledge they need, and then like less of a struggle, less of a stress just to get Absolutely. in and access, right? And less cost. So let's talk more about the other areas. So we talked a little, I directly talked about women, obviously, what we know with like as they get older with leaky bladder stuff, but that's just one little portion of what you work with. What else do you work with and what other okay. populations do you work with as well? Yes, okay. So really men and women of all ages, okay. if you have a pelvis, I work with you. Perfect. <laughs> so a lot of the typical symptoms um, are constipation. So there's a lot of bladder and bowel dysfunction that's actually pelvic floor related that's totally treatable. And my heart beats for this population, which is everybody, 
that we live with a lot of shame that something is wrong with me, yeah. something is broken, and I'm going to have to figure out how to fix it. Mm -hmm. When in reality, a lot of times our symptoms are telling us something and telling us if we can listen and say, okay, body, what is it that you're needing? The body is smart. Yes. The body is trying to tell us something. And so if we can find, hey, is the pelvic floor tension causing your constipation? And so then it doesn't matter how much fiber you take, you're not going to free that up until we address that. Or if we're running to the bathroom all the time, right. even if we don't have leakage, maybe it's that urgency. And so we have to listen to, okay, what does the bladder need so that I don't have to always know where the bathroom is? Right. And then we live free. Yeah. Way much freer. And it's not knowing that, you know, being able to remove that shame of like, okay, I'm not broken. Yes. If there's actually an answer. And it's right. way more treatable than what we've been told. And not have to be embarrassed with it. And notice you talked about men, because you work with a lot of a lot of male populations too, probably associated with erectile dysfunction at the same time, maybe as well. Some of it is um, related to prostate health. And prostate health. That's yeah. very closely related to the pelvic floor. Yep. Um, so the bladder function, whether you're male or female, bladder and bowel function is really important, and the pelvic floor controls a lot of that, right. a lot more than what we're aware of. And you're able to, like, you know, all of her studies and her research and her knowledge and everything is being able to work with that, like, without going under the knife, exactly. <laughs> without taking drugs and surgery, there's a time and a place if that is, but yes. let's go a less conservative route so that way you can start to get your health back. Yes. And you actually quoted, um, you said you want to see a world with healthy pelvises, right? Yes. Something like that. Like, and, and then obviously working, I'm assuming, with kids. So what yes. about like with bedwetting and stuff like that Absolutely. too? Absolutely. So a lot of times, and every patient is different, right. every kiddo is different. A lot of times, the, in a lot of children that I've worked with, what I find is that the body does a really good job keeping us safe. And so there's a lot, we have a cultural um, epidemic of tension, yeah. bodily tension, <laughs> don't we? And the pelvic floor is no exception. So when that pelvic floor gets tight in kiddos for whatever reason, whether it's because they're afraid they're going to get made fun of, or they can't hold it and make it there in time, whatever, whatever reason it causes, or because they've had maybe an episode of constipation that was uncomfortable, mm -hmm. that pelvic floor is going to do a good job staying safe. Yep. So then we're going to have a lot of trouble, and that lends itself to the leakage and constipation mm -hmm. in those kiddos that's totally treatable. Yeah. For them to gain back their confidence yeah. and feel like a normal human again is just yeah. so life-giving. I, As you say that, um, growing up, and I'm just going to give an example, I remember there was one of my girlfriends and her sister, literally she would not poop, maybe, but like, I mean, there's so many other factors that can come in as far as constipation and stuff like that, but like, I remember they literally had to get like keep a metal hanger around because when she finally did poop, it would hurt so bad. One, she didn't want to because it hurt so bad. They would have to cut up the poop in the toilet because it was so backed up, so big and so built up. And so when you're talking about little kids like that, I go back and I think about like one of my old high school girlfriends and her sister that maybe, I, I mean, I don't know, I can't even remember exactly, maybe once every two weeks or once a week or something like that. But whenever she did go, she was so backed up, it hurt her that she didn't want to. So exactly, exactly. like you said, like they don't yes. want to go because they don't want to hurt yes. because of how compacted they are. Yes. And so it's like to start to work with the pelvic floor yes. and and work with that and see what can happen so that way you're going more regularly, not holding and being stocked up and being afraid of exactly. having normal bowel movements, right? Yes. Oh my gosh. So treatable. And so obviously this is a mommy meet and greet. So moms, obviously yes. like your pelvis has expanded. And one of the biggest things is like, they always talk about Kegel exercises. However, now we realize like the pelvic floor is usually always tight. So we really need to do like diaphragmatic breathing, you got it. right? Yes. <laughs> like you yes. really need to be doing more diaphragmatic breathing because the Kegels is like, yeah, your body usually knows, like you said, it's in that state of alarm and the yes. state of stress all the time. Yes. We actually need to learn how to Hey, how does a baby come out? Not from exactly. squeezing, well, not from like keeping it held in, exactly. but learn how to relax too. So let's yes. talk about that with the pregnancy okay. and then after birth, popu like birthing population. Okay, absolutely. Yeah. Yes, so the pelvic floor does such a great job keeping us safe and, and holding tension. And sometimes it's just tired and it's done yeah. a lot of work. And a lot of times that can, something so simple as learning where the pelvic floor is and how to manage it during pregnancy can relieve pelvic girdle pain and can relieve pelvic floor pain. And we haven't even talked about pain with intimacy. It's yeah. totally oh, related to pelvic floor. It's totally treatable. Intimacy, yeah. Totally treatable. But then if that mama knows how to um, feel and find and control the pelvic floor, usually to release it, birth can be so much easier. Gosh. Because those are the mamas that have a harder time with birth is when that pelvic floor is just doing a good job staying safe. Mm -hmm. But if that pelvic floor relaxes, 
then the pelvic girdle can be where it needs to be, can expand, and baby can descend beautifully mm -hmm. instead of being restricted. Right. So really asking, what, how can we help that pelvic floor release anytime we're trying to get mama comfortable and optimize birth right. outcomes? Which yeah. then also decreases interventions that would be happening. No vacuum exactly. extraction, forceps extraction, which leads yes. to a whole other things, episiotomies, oh, now I'm tearing, and all this other stuff. You got it. See how it all comes into play right there. So it's like, get you know, work on this, not just right before you have the baby, but do this like ahead of time for your own health and well-being and then for the delivery of the baby. And then after the baby comes out, you know, things are starting to reintegrate again. So now it's gonna be important to keep up with these neurological integrations, these activations. So that way, yes, things are trying to go back to what whatever normal is, you know what I mean? Exactly. I would think it would be very helpful too. And then you talked about intimacy, so like, you don't have to have pain during intimacy. Like, exactly. There's, there could be a pelvic floor issue going on, yes, right? Absolutely. Most of the time, that's what is going on. And again, it's back to that shame of like, what's wrong with me and how many relationships could be so reversed much. and relieved by realizing it's as simple as the same way we would, if your shoulders were tight, mm -hmm. you would go take care of that. Mm -hmm. It's exactly the same thing. It's just a muscle in a different place. Yeah. Helping that muscle. How can we help that muscle start to feel safe? and then it's gone. Sometimes it's that easy. Mm. It sounds crazy, but it is. Oh my gosh. Yes. So that, this has just been, I hope this is like, I just love this stuff. It's been so helpful. And so clearly people don't have to go to an MD to come to you. Right. You have direct access. So they can find you on Instagram. They can find you. We can we can zoom in on and yeah. they can find you, look you up. What's the, the easiest way for people to contact you? So. Instagram, Instagram is great. Okay. Yes, okay. Instagram is the best connection. Um, also, I've got my cell phone number right here, so anyone can give me a call that way if that's easier. Um, and my email's on there as well. Perfect. Well, thank you so much, thank Doc. You. I'm so excited to have you part of the resource and realize we have these resources in Northwest Arkansas. Reach out, go the least conservative route first before directly going into like cutting, slicing, and adding stuff into your body because your body is so innately intelligent just as you were talking about and you're speaking our language on that and it's giving you signs and symptoms and utilize the resources that we have here so thank you again thank you Dr. Yes. Alice. Appreciate it. <laughs>